بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله it was narrated on the authority of Abu Ayyub al-Ansari رضي الله تعالى عنه that once during the journey of the Holy Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم a Bedouin meaning a desert Arab uh, who didn't live in the city uh, appeared before him and caught hold of the nose string of his she camel and then said so this Bedouin he grabbed the the nose, uh, the, the, the string or the rope that holds the camel of the Prophet Sallallahu You can just imagine the uh, distress that caused, especially with the companions and the way they loved the Prophet Sallallahu and would view such a behavior as kind of disrespectful. So the man grabbed the string of the, the she camel of the messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and then said, Messenger of Allah, inform me about that which takes me near to paradise and draws me away from the hellfire. Then the narrated said, the Prophet Sallallahu stopped for a while and cast a glance upon his companions and then said, he was afforded a good opportunity. He, the Prophet Sallallahu addressing the Bedouin said, whatever you have uttered, repeat whatever you have uttered. The Bedouin then repeated that what he said, and the Prophet ﷺ remarked, the deed which can draw you near to paradise and take you away from hell is that you worship Allah and associate none with him, and you establish prayer and pay zakat and do good to your kin. After having uttered these words, the Holy Prophet ﷺ asked the Bedouin to release the nose string of his she camel. Look at how easy Islam is and how difficult that we make Islam often for the people. In this hadith of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we find in Sahih Muslim, the Messenger Alayhi Salatu Wasallam said that by practicing the pillars of Islam, like the Shahada, this will take you away from the hellfire. So that means it's not just uttering the testimony of faith, that's what we have to uh, realize, that uttering the testimony of faith with its conditions, with sincerity, with truthfulness, with uh, ikhlas, with ilm, you know, with those conditions for the Shahada are imperative. And that will protect you from the hellfire. As simple as that. But it means those things have to be in place. And it means that it requires knowledge, Islamic knowledge. How do we istanbat el min hadha hadith? How do we begin to always say that it's got to be knowledge? Because knowledge is what gives you understanding of what you're uttering. The testimony of faith to understand really true Tawheed because think about it, all the people of who claim to be Muslim that are on shirk, some of them, some of them worship the awliya, some of them worship their elder, their dead elders, uh, some of them have Hindu-like beliefs, but yet they utter the testimony of faith. So that shows it's not simply the testimony, but it requires knowledge of what that really means. And the only way we can gain knowledge of what the testimony of faith really means is by talab al-ilm, is by seeking knowledge of that, by reading the Qur'an, reading the authentic sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu and studying with the ulama sunnah, so that we have the proper understanding of tawheed, the proper understanding of ibadah, the proper way to paradise, the proper way to take us from the hellfire. Uh, the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam said, Men salaka tariqan yal talmasuhu bihi al-min. Sahalallahu lahu. Bihi tariqan ila jannah. Whoever traverses the path of knowledge, meaning Islamic knowledge, al-min nathiyah, beneficial knowledge, Allah will make easy for him the path to paradise. Allah will make easy for him the path to jannah. To jannah. To paradise. So if that's the case, <coughs> that that means to having paradise made easy for you is knowledge, Islamic knowledge, then of course, from 
the, the most logical direct conclusion we can de we can uh, derive from that nas is that we need knowledge of what uh, what the shahada is and we need knowledge on how to practice zakat every year how many people have questions that they pose to the ulama or pose to the students of knowledge or pose to the imams in their local communities in du'at about zakat why because People need that knowledge. They need knowledge on how to practice that properly. Because people will tell you anything. And people will infer anything without knowledge. So it's absolutely imperative, Ahabat Tefillah, that we gain this Islamic knowledge about these things so that we can pra practice these simplistic duties very uh, with ease, or at least with understanding to the best of our ability. And then we'll have the reward of Allah and the forgiveness of Allah and the mercy of Allah wa ta'ala. So this hadith shows us the simplicity of, of, of Islam, but that a part of that simplicity and what makes it simple is that you have to gain some prerequisite knowledge so that way you can practice it. So that way you can understand it. So that way that what you're doing is proper. You don't want to be on false worship and just uttering the testimony of faith. We want our shahada accepted. We want all of our ibadah accepted by Allah We all need Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. We all have to have ikhlas lillah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all want the simplistic simplicity. We want the simplistic path to Jannah. And that comes with uh, seeking knowledge, Islamic knowledge. The Prophet Wasallam said, and this shows that when Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala loves a person, uh, with regards to that Islamic knowledge, he Wasallam said, مَنْ يُرِدَ اللَّهُ بِهِ خَيْرًا يُفَقْبَهُ فِي الدِّينِ Whenever Allah wants good for a person, He gives him fiqh, He gives him understanding of the religion. So that fiqh fi deen is, is, is Islamic knowledge. It, it is knowing and understanding Islamic knowledge. And that means that Allah wants good and loves a person. If he gives them that blessing of fiqh fi deen, and that fiqh fi deen is not just understanding some nasus, but it's, it's practicing that, those texts. Because there are many people, or there are some people who memorize, and some people who gain something, but they don't practice or they're weak in their practice. So it's imperative, ahabatifillah, that you and I try to uh, benefit ourselves by gaining Islamic knowledge, gaining fiqh deen, and practicing what we gain, and striving our best to love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, worship Allah tabarak wa ta'ala ala ilm wa basira, on knowledge and in, with in, insight or wisdom, because we're in need of Allah, He doesn't need us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with ikhlas, with ablad, and bless us with ilm. Ilm al-nafi, wa rizqan tayyib, wa amalan, mutaqabbilan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam, ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.